Well, today's escape to the country has a somewhat military feel about it in more ways than one. The body of water behind me was once the training area for what became one of the most audacious airborne operations of the Second World War. And it was based on a very simple principle, a child skimming a stone over the surface of the water. It's an incredible story, so stick around and I'll tell you more about it. In today's show, I'll be helping some house buyers who take a lot to be impressed. This is the first wow I've heard, actually. <laughs> but when we go large, their responses get better and better. It's big. <laughs> Very big. <laughs> that is a first surprise. First impressions, that seems yeah. good value. Well, today we're in Derbyshire, and this is Derwent Water and the mighty dam that contains it. Now, back in 1943, this valley and the skies above me would have reverberated to the sound of RAF Lancaster bombers training for what became known as the Dam's Raid. It was daring, yet simple. Drop a bomb from just 50 feet over the surface of the water, watch it skim up to the dam, sink, and then explode. Their target were the great dams that dominated Germany's industrial heartland, the Ruhr. The raid itself was a fantastic success. It gave the country a much-needed morale boost. And for all those who were involved, well, they became immortalised as the Dam Busters. Situated mainly within Derbyshire's borders, but nudging over into neighbouring counties, the Peak District became Britain's first designated national park back in 1951. And the area comes with two distinct geological landscapes. To the north, there are the wilder moorlands of the Dark Peak, which rear up, creating a rugged skyline, while in the south, you'll find the much gentler limestone slopes of the White Peak. The wooded dales, pretty villages, and network of walking trails across this part of the South Pennines are a huge draw for around 8.5 million visitors a year. One of the Peak District's most renowned locations is the spa town of Buxton, which has been on the map since Roman times. Indeed, one of the great attractions for them was the supposed health benefits of the town's thermal springs. And the fine Regency and Victorian buildings in its centre, a testament to the town's fortunes over the centuries, thanks to this natural resource. With villages and a landscape that have inspired writers such as Jane Austen and Charlotte Bronte, it's no wonder the Peak District remains an appealing option for aspiring escapees. Now, across Derbyshire in general, your average detached will set you back £200,000. It's a lot of money, but it is, however, £55,000 beneath the national average. But step inside the National Park, a real hot spot, and that figure can jump to three hundred grand. But when you're surrounded by gorgeous countryside such as this, can you really put a price on it? For just shy of £400,000, this two-bedroom detached stone cottage in Winster is worth a look. Dating back to the 1650s, the living room holds on to its stone fireplace and exposed beams, which also run through the open-plan kitchen diner. Outside provides a generous one and a half acres of land with delightful countryside views. Or what about this extensive four-bedroom stone property in Colton, on the market for £585,000? The pale oak wood of the roof beams and the wood burner add a warm, rustic feel to the sitting room. There's also plenty of space and light in the characterful kitchen. And outside, the half acre of grounds really offset the property's elevated position. For a budget stretching to £795,000, this former watermill in the Hope Valley has been refurbished to provide high-spec contemporary living areas. These include a show-stopping central island in the magnificent kitchen diner. And, of its four bedrooms, the spacious master has a rather luxurious ensuite. So, as you can see, a glittering bag of properties on offer, if ever I saw one. So let's get on and meet today's buyers and find out what all the fuss is about. David and Fiona have spent the last 15 months living in Prestwood, Buckinghamshire, in this four-bedroom rental property with their two sons. The move here was just one of many over the years, as David works for the Royal Navy, a career that's seen them regularly living in military housing. But with Fiona having recently completed a PhD, our couple feel that now is the perfect time to at last buy their own home in a rural setting. We want to move to the country 
essentially because we've enjoyed life here. We've also had a number of holidays in, in the Peak District, um, but certainly living in the Chilterns for a year and a half has made us realise that uh, we quite like the, the peace and quiet tranquility. I think it's essentially uh, trying to lead a, a reasonably active life, certainly outside of work. Yes, yeah. That opportunity to be outside in the countryside, you know, whether it's walking or, or bike riding, um, be surrounded by the greenery really, isn't it? Despite being in rental accommodation for so long, they have a clear vision of what their own future home needs to give them. In our next property, um, ideally we're looking for four bedrooms, um, but we would consider three. Mm -hmm. uh, we want a detached property. Uh, we'd like to have um, a large kitchen diner, a square lounge. A, square, a large square lounge. We'd prefer fewer rooms, but larger rooms and as light as possible. And it seems that their love of bright square rooms has put them off traditional country houses. We're not very keen on th thatched properties, are we? Or properties that are made of wood. Although we like barns, we don't like wooden barns. Probably don't like beams or, or sort of oldie worldy properties. We, we go probably more for a, a modern, airy, roomy property. And outside space is important to David, who's after a half-acre garden so he can have a kick about with his sons. Now, all this should be possible, as living in military quarters for over 10 years has allowed them to save up a handsome amount for their move to the Peak District. Our maximum budget is £700,000. Well, the good news is that Fiona and David are in the very enviable position of being able to move pretty much anywhere they like in the country. But they've picked the Peak District, which for me is a very good choice indeed. But I am somewhat concerned about their list of wants. The large kitchen diner, well, of course, that goes without saying. But they seem slightly obsessed with having square rooms, in particular a square living room. I'm just hoping they don't get bogged down in the detail and lose sight of the bigger picture. Otherwise, quite frankly, I could have my work cut out. David and Fiona are keen for us to base their house search within the borders of the Peak District National Park, giving them access to traditional market towns such as Bakewell. We've lined up three Derbyshire dwellings to show them, but I won't be revealing the price of each until they've had a guess first. The last property is, of course, our mystery house, which, if they are ready for something rather unique, is a magnificent proposition. Well, guys, it's lovely to see you up here in Derbyshire. Thank you. Now, over the last few years, you have moved goodness knows how many times due to your service life. That's right, yeah. We've spent quite a bit of time in Portsmouth, and we're now at um, RF Holton in the Chilterns. Um, but we're looking now to move and, uh, and settle down and lay down permanent routes. I bet you can't wait, Fiona. Uh, yeah, I'm quite excited, actually, because uh, we like this part of the world, don't we? Um, we like the hills, and the children's are beautiful, but uh, we really like the wildness of this area when you get up onto the moors and things, yeah. But, of course, the good thing about being in this position is that you're ready to move straight away. So if we find you the perfect house, you know, today or tomorrow, you could be yeah. in in weeks. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we'll we could. Good, good yeah. to go. Yeah. yeah. Now, let's have a think about the budget. £700,000 is a nice sum to have. The best part of, a, well, three-quarters of a million you think mm, about it? Near enough, yes. Yeah, near yeah. enough. Have you had a good look at anything up here so far? Uh, not really. We have um, done some searches online, yeah. and last summer we did view a property in the area, didn't we? But we weren't really serious at the time, so no, I wouldn't say we've had a good look. I'd say this is very much the start of a, a good look, isn't it? So gloves are off? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We're all terrified about this square <laughs> living room, you know. We've been searching Derbyshire <laughs> high and low for a house yeah. with a square living room. Um, but we have got you, I think, you know, three fantastic properties to Excellent. look at. Your budget does go quite a long way up here, as I'm sure you will appreciate. The weather is with us. We've got some beautiful landscape to drive through. Mm. Let's get going. Yeah. Come on, follow me. For their £700,000 budget, David and Fiona would like a detached property, which gives them large square living rooms, even if it's at the expense of character. A generous family kitchen diner, ideally four bedrooms, and enough garden space for David to play football with the boys. And all of it wrapped up in a rural setting in the Peak District. As 
As we get our house search started, we're going all out for location and heading close to the hillside village of Yorgrave. Set in the heart of the Peak District National Park, it's home to around 500 residents and civic landmarks including its marketplace and church, which, although it dates back to Norman times, was largely restored in the late 19th century. Our first property is made from local stone and comes in the form of a 17th century barn conversion. That's big. <laughs> it's very big. You get everything that you can see. Yeah, yeah and it's peaceful, isn't it? It's nice. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, no, I'm, in I'm interested actually to go inside and see what they've got, yeah. Follow me. This conversion is laid out in a basic U-shape around a central courtyard. The bones of the old part are well preserved, while inside has been sympathetically designed with modern living in mind. Let's start in here. Nice, cosy kitchen for you, Fiona. Yes, yeah. Mm. I mean, it's not a massive kitchen diner. No. But the but rest of the house there's does There's opportunities to go a breakfast up. bar here, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. hand-built, it's locally made. Uh, you've got a dishwasher in there, everything's integrated. Um, you know, it's it's very, very cosy. You've got lovely yes. you know, oil-fired range there. Um, you know, your classic sort of country mm. look. Yes, no, it's, it's very nice. I just think it's possibly just a little bit small, but I accept we've got quite a bit more to see. Yeah. Come and have a look at this. Come on in. Yeah, much better. <laughs> <laughs> that is lovely, yeah. Yeah. Really like this. yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got that lovely terrific. feature there. Yeah, that is a super feature. You know, it hints at all the local architecture, yeah. but actually it's quite unusual. It's very unusual. This is a lovely space, isn't it? It feels light and airy, and it's big enough, yeah. isn't it? The stairs lead up to a mezzanine drawing room, which makes impressive use of the roof space. Flowing off the other end of the sitting room is a further reception room with flagstone flooring. This leads onto a beautiful timber-built conservatory looking out over the courtyard. Round the corner from here, there's a useful office which has stairs that lead up to a cosy snug. This is a spot that um, the current owners used as a den for their children who've now grown up and, and left home. They've okay. now got it as a little sort of little impromptu dining area. Right then, David, there's a corridor there. Okay. Head that way. <laughs> the warren of bedrooms all file off this rear hallway and altogether give them four doubles, enough to accommodate their two sons and visiting guests. There's also an attractive Victorian-style bathroom. In contrast, next door is this modern high-spec shower room, which, in effect, gives them an ensuite to the bedroom, which would be theirs. Come and have a look at this one. This is okay. currently the master. For you, size-wise at the moment, how is it? It's probably a little bit smaller than we're used to at the moment. Yes. But, I mean, it's nice and airy. And yeah, like it's nice the, and airy, yeah. absolutely. I like the... Yeah. Yeah, yes, the this light. door opens out into the courtyard. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a very nice feature. And, of course, you're only overlooked by you. Yeah, yes. the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I think it's, it's a sufficient yeah. size, isn't it? Yeah. Well, look, let's pop outside okay. and, and, and finish up and um, talk about the money. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Be interesting to see what you think of this yes. one. This spacious property definitely gives them a raft of living areas for them and their children to spread out in. And it's in perfect decorative order, so no work needed. Outside, there's an integrated double garage, and although the immediate garden doesn't give their sons their football pitch, we do have a solution. Now, effectively, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the courtyard. However, okay. there is a very small little paddock. It's now much overgrown, but it has in its time been, you know, a very well cared for vegetable plot, uh, tennis court, uh, you name it, they've used right. it. Okay. 70 pounds a year is what it costs to rent it. It's an ongoing thing. It's still rented by this property. It's okay. something you would pick up, you okay. know, along the way. The nice thing about that is that you're not having to buy it. Yes. You've got £700,000 mm. or so to spend. David, what's this on the market for? Well, it's a gorgeous location, a fairly mm. substantial property. I think it's close to our upper end, I'd say, 685. pounds £685,000, yeah. Fiona? Um, yes, I was thinking a bit less, actually, because there's not a lot of land with it. Um, so I was maybe thinking 649. 649. Yeah. This is on the market for 750,000 pounds. Now, we haven't brought you here to tease you with something which we think is out of range. Mm -hmm. um, you are cash buyers, effectively. Yes. They want to move and can move immediately. 
I think this is open to a very sensible period of negotiation if you wanted it. Is it going to be for you? I wonder. Mm. Go and have a look around. This gorgeous barn conversion is over budget at £750,000, but it highlights the premium paid for a large property in a desirable location. However, David and Fiona are cash buyers and could make an offer which reflects their strong position to move quickly. It provides them with a quirky mix of five reception areas, a high-spec but rustic kitchen breakfast room and four double bedrooms. It's all wrapped up in a stunning rural setting within the National Park borders. We've spent time in the village on holiday before, so we are familiar with the location, and um, I don't think you can get a nicer location in the Peak District. It's really quiet, away from traffic, um, lovely and rural. Overall, I, I like this barn conversion. I think it's the, the main living area, which is so large and light. That's the, the bit that sells it for me. Other aspects, such as the kitchen, the study, and some of the bedrooms are perhaps a little bit dark and a little bit small, but the main living area is absolutely wonderful. I really liked the old part of the property, which surprised me because I usually go for modern buildings, but ideally I'd like a, a bigger kitchen um, and I'd like more outdoor space in terms of uh, lawn. Uh huh. Hi there. Hi. How are we doing? Fine. Yeah, great, thanks. Yeah, has this one grown a bit on you, David? It's, it has grown on me, yeah. yeah. Um, initial reactions were slightly negative, but uh, I can appreciate the setting and the space. Good. I love it. I think it's a good one to start with, but we've got plenty more to see. Follow me. OK. Thank you. The Peak District's beautiful and protected landscape has drawn David and Fiona to spend many a happy holiday here, which is why they now want to make a permanent move to the area. Its towns and villages also have a preserved heritage of their own, a fine example being Bakewell, granted its Royal Market Charter in 1330. Sat on the banks of the River Wye, its distinctive five-arch bridge dates back to the 13th century and is Grade 1 listed. The town is also the birthplace of the traditional homegrown treat, the Bakewell pudding. And earlier in the week, we arranged for David and Fiona to drop in on Gemma Feezy, a local shop owner, to find out more. Hello. Hi, Gemma. How are I'm you? Dave. Fine. Hi. You want to know the difference between a Bakewell pudding and a Bakewell tart? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. So this one is the Bakewell pudding. The traditional to make well, the original, puff pastry base, layer of strawberry jam, eggs, almonds, sugar and butter in this one. And then this is what everybody knows as the Bakewell tart, yes. which doesn't actually come from Bakewell. Whereas the cherry top tart is now mass produced, the Bakewell pudding comes from far more humble beginnings. It's believed it was created in the 1860s by a lady called Mrs Greaves in the kitchen of a local inn and the recipe features an egg mixture that was spread onto the jam rather than being mixed into the pastry. Under Gemma's watchful eye, our pudding novices are about to see if they can match up to her high standards and make their own pudding. The first step is to work all the air bubbles out of the puff pastry base. OK, so how are we getting on? What do you think? I think you're perfect. I think you're both about there. So you need yeah. to add it to your foil. Then a teaspoon of strawberry jam is added. Is that looking right? Yep, that looks fine. Over the top, that's excellent. And lastly, a spoonful of the eggs, almond, sugar and butter mixture. Marvellous. So into the baking tray. And we'll get those baked off. 20 minutes, moderate oven. Yeah. Sounds 400 good. degrees, 400, is 400, yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. But, as we all know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, so there's only one way to find out if they've risen to the challenge. Traditionally, you would eat this warm with cream or custard. I'm a custard girl myself. To secure the identity of the Bakewell pudding as originating from the area, Gemma is currently campaigning for it to be awarded the status of protected geographical indication, meaning that it couldn't be produced anywhere else but in the region. Mmm. Mmm? The pastry is so light. I know, it tastes so good, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. Very sweet. And judging by David and Fiona's reaction, it looks like they'll certainly be providing a ringing endorsement once they make their move to Derbyshire. So are you now Bakewell pudding fans or Bakewell tart fans? I think we'll pudding. go Bakewell pudding. Excellent. That's delicious. Always love the conversion. Mm. 
Mm, it's really nice. As our house hunt continues, we're going to try and redress the issue of land by heading towards the village of Baslow. Set in the Derwent Valley, Baslow's array of original stone buildings house some flourishing independent retailers and a choice of local pubs. Less than a 10 minute drive away, our second property not only gives them amazing panoramic views, but space in abundance. Okay, here we are, property number two on a blustery peak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very attractive. First impressions, it looks really nice, yeah. Yeah, it does um, look That attractive. sort of thing does grab me and think, yeah, wow. Ah, yeah. So this, is, this, is a, this is the first wow I've heard, yeah. actually. <laughs> Good. I like it. What you can see here is just a part of it. It's like an nice, iceberg. Really? <laughs> so we're going to go in via the back door. Okay. Let's see what you make of it. Come on. Okay. The great thing about this robust stone built house is that the modernised interior gives them the big rooms and clean lines they were after. Right, come on in. Squeaky door. Mmm. It's a nice size, isn't it? Yeah? This is, yeah, yeah huge. It's exactly. lovely flooring as well. Yeah, super. You've also got a little sort of day area over there. They've got a couple of sofas in. And, of course, you've got the range. Oil fire. That does everything. Central heating, hot water, the lot. Really? Uh, granite tops, okay. you know. Uh, yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. No, I really like this. Do you? Yes, it's a very nice kitchen, yeah. The enormous kitchen leads on to a separate dining room, complete with a working fireplace. But we'll take a look at the spacious main sitting room. Now, David, I'm thinking, being a football man, <laughs> this would be a room that you'd really enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. Look at the TV. Yeah. Yes. Surround sound already built in. Ah. I think I could make myself a home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not bad, is it? It's yeah, decent. this is nice. Yeah. Oh, and the fire. Multi-fuel, yep. Right. Burner there as okay. well. Now, the conservatory we saw on the way in, this is it here, and this sort of flows nicely through back to the kitchen, and it gives you the views that we uh, had a glimpse of on our way in. Yeah, it's yeah, really nice. And it's nicely built, you know, it's a mixture of wood, glass, and, of course, you've got the nice texture of the exterior wall of the house uh, as well. Yeah, it's very nice, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, so right. It's a good space. OK. Looking good. Yeah, Looking good. Actually, Are we yeah. scoring a few more points Absolutely. on this one? Yeah, definitely. I like it a lot more. This property just keeps on giving, and there's yet another reception room which could make a snug for the children or a study for Fiona. There's also a handy cloakroom tucked away off the main entrance hall. The large rooms downstairs seem to have measured up to their exacting standards, and the space on offer upstairs shouldn't disappoint them either, as there are five bedrooms in total. One is a large double and elegantly furnished, while another is dual aspect with a more modern decor. The third bedroom features a more country feel, while the smallest makes for a good-sized study. All the bedrooms have access to the large family bathroom, which has a quality finish and a stylish modern feel. As we're about to see, the master takes things to a whole new level. So this is yours. Your room. Oh, right, that's good, yes. That's yeah. a really nice size. Yeah, that yeah, is. Yeah, I like this a lot. Yeah, and yeah. once again, a three windows. <laughs> Good part of the house to have the bedroom as well, isn't it? You've also got an ensuite. OK. Yeah, which is here. Now, you've got to be happy in here. Gosh, that's an ensuite. It's not even purple, is it? <laughs> it's not purple, no. There you wow. go. Wow. That could be a family bathroom, couldn't it? In any other place, it yeah. would be. But here, it is just yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. It's lovely. It's lovely and light. Yeah, this I like this really a lot. Nice. So you'd be happy in your master bedroom? Yeah. And the, and the kitchen. And the kitchen. And the living room. Yep. Yeah. And the conservatory. Yes. Yeah. It's very, all very positive, yeah. It's big. <laughs> very big. <laughs> and outside just gets bigger because the lawn part of the garden, as I hinted earlier, is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, I kind of fibbed earlier when I said that all you got was the garden. Right. Because you also get this. Ah. <laughs> all in, it's about two and a half acres this right. plot. So okay. plenty of room to kick a football around. You know what's coming next, don't you? Okay, yeah. <laughs> what's going to happen now? You're going to ask how much it's worth, Jules. I am. Oh. Are you going to tell me? I can't see this being less than 750. 750, yeah. I'll go 740. You're right. You're both absolutely right to go over your budget. Right. But the good news mm. is that this has been reduced to just under your budget. 
Really? This could be yours for £695,000. Gosh. Yeah, that is a surprise. First impression that seems yeah, good value. Is, I would yeah. say so. Right then, yeah. go back inside and figure out what you're going to do with all this new space we've found you. Yep. Off you yeah. go. Thank you. <laughs> oh, happy days. I do love it when a plan comes together. Under budget at £695,000, our second property gives them acres of house and land. Along with four possible reception rooms, the kitchen diner is of a size and style that Fiona loved. Amongst its five bedrooms, the master comes with a fabulous ensuite. And let's not forget, they get two and a half acres of land, plenty of space for football practice. The kitchen was wow, actually. You know, it was, it was uh, even bigger than I could have imagined and, um, you know, beautifully done, lots of windows, um, lovely granite worktops, beautiful flooring, very impressive, really like that. I could see us eating there as a family. The layout works, it seems to flow from room to room. Um, there's a separate dining area. The main living room is great. It's got a surround sound system, so, you, you know, you could play movies there. And then going upstairs, there's plenty of space up there for, for everyone. This seems a lot of house for the money, and it, it, you know, at the site we've had, it seems very good value for money. Now, would I be sticking my neck out if I said that this property had really touched a nerve with you two? It's very close to what we're looking for, it's isn't it? It's captured imagination, yeah. yeah. Um, in many ways, it's exactly what we're looking mm. for. So have we done it? Do we need to look any further? No, we've got the mystery house. We have got the mystery house, yeah. Come on, then. As the evening draws in over the countryside, it marks the end of the first day of our property search. After renting in military quarters for over 10 years, David and Fiona want to up sticks from their temporary home in Buckinghamshire and put down permanent roots with their two sons in rural Derbyshire. The two properties we've seen so far have highlighted their preference for clean lines and square rooms. So it's a real gamble as to whether the quirks and character of our mystery house will pay off. And I like the bees. Yay! <laughs> Happy days, right. And I hop aboard some historic transport from days gone by. Well, our first day of house hunting was definitely a game of two halves, two very different properties and two very different reactions. But as David said, when we left our second property, there is, of course, one more to come. It's mystery house time. What, I wonder, will they make of this? If you didn't like the mystery house, would you go back and have another look at property number two? Yes, we would. Definitely, yes. And I think we'd uh, come back up again in the next couple of weeks and bring the boys up and look around the local area because we don't really know that area so well, do we? Well, let's hope that our mystery house also encourages you to come and have another look at it. Mm -hmm. You never know, we might just throw a spanner in the works. Mm. Yeah. We're travelling to the Peak District village of Parwich, a gorgeous location with limestone cottages and a church set around the village green and it's all just a stone's throw from the glorious Derbyshire Hills. David and Fiona have said they wanted modern, spacious square rooms with outside space in a rural setting. But for our mystery house, we're turning things on their head as we're giving them a traditional property with only a small front garden set right in the middle of a village. Nevertheless, I think this offering could make a rather grand impression. Come and see what we've got as our mystery house. Wow. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's a beautiful looking property, isn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. This wow. is a real historic gem. It's all been done. There's nothing you need to do to it. The community centre is just over there. That's just been finished. This is a community that's very much alive and kicking. Mm -hmm. And this property is in the middle of it. It's lovely. It's lovely it's looking. It's a beautiful property, location. Yeah. And yeah, it looks yeah. nice. What well, we haven't yeah. got are acres. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the garden. Mm -hmm. OK. But we've got the village green and we've got the rest of the Peak District yeah. on your doorstep. Right, yeah. I can't wait to show you this one. Come on, have okay. a look. This 18th century farmhouse is Grade 2 listed with plenty of character and traditional quirky features, but David and Fiona have really taken to the exterior. So let's see if we can keep up the momentum inside. Come on in, Fiona. 
Grab it's the door, nice. David. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's nice, actually. I yeah. do like that. The fridge is behind that uh, purpose-built cupboard. Everything in here has been handmade. It's a nice, solid wood kitchen. You've got a wood burner in the corner. And that's a little, nice. you know, yeah. everyday sort of dining area there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, our table would fit lovely there, wouldn't it? Yeah. Our kitchen table. Yeah, nice and that's simple, nice, but very, very tasteful. Yeah. Great responses. So, time to check out the utility room. This, I think, is quite exciting. Yeah. There aren't many like this. <laughs> that's an amazing utility, actually. <laughs> yeah. isn't, isn't it, it? just? Yeah. It's as big as a kitchen, almost. Yeah, it's great, yeah. isn't it? That is, yeah, it's another kitchen, basically, isn't it, really? Really, yeah. And I like the beams. Yay! <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> Happy days indeed, and those beams continue back through the kitchen in the formal dining room. But next, we'll take a look at the main reception room on the other side of the hallway. Lovely hallway. We're going to go up those yeah, stairs in a moment, but this is, I don't know, serene, I think. Mm -hmm. That's nice. It's really nice, it? yeah. Yeah, another yeah. lovely fireplace. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. My fear was that, based on our first property, would this be a bit too historic? No. I don't think so. Not, not the way it's presented no. and how, how it looks. It's uh, been uh, presented incredibly tastefully. The regular Georgian proportions of the sitting room have measured up to their expectations. And that sense of historic grandeur continues upstairs in the four bedrooms which are spread out over two floors. First stop, the master. OK. This is the main bedroom. OK. Wow. You've yeah. got four to choose from, but this is yeah. currently the owner's bedroom. There's a door over there which leads to an enormous walk-in wardrobe. Right. 20-something feet of hanging space and all that. And the ensuite comes with a splash of luxury. That's wow, isn't it? Isn't it? That's, that's big enough, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. very uh, elegant. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I really it's like really that. works, doesn't it? Yeah. Also on this floor is a good-sized double bedroom, which also has a beautifully furnished shower room. On the next level, there's another palatial double room with a bathroom next door, as well as a fantastic fourth room, which makes great use of the roof space. So this is the very top. <laughs> now, what about okay. this? Okay. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Like That's this. interesting, isn't yeah. it? Isn't it? Yeah. Lovely and spacious. So how's our mystery house doing? Very well, actually, yeah, very well. Thumbs up so far, yeah. yeah. It's good. <laughs> it really is. Good. Our historic mystery house has worked its magic, but the rub comes outside as the garden doesn't serve up enough space for a football pitch. However, along with the stone-built garage across the road, there's an attached two-storey barn to throw into the mix, which they could convert into a great play space for the children or use as a separate dwelling with the right planning consent. Our mystery house would appear to have hit the spot. Yeah, I really it's like caused that. caused a bit of confusion, I think, now. Yeah. Good. That's a good thing. Choice is a great <laughs> thing. OK. So, let's have a think about the money, then. It's our final right. price guess of our property mm. search. Fiona, £700,000 is what you've got to spend. I can't see it being within our budget, but I don't believe you'd go too far over. Um, I'm going to guess 725. 725? I'll go um, 730. 730. You just got a PhD, didn't you? I did, yeah. And you're right. On the nail? £725,000. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Excellent. It was worth it? studying, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now offers in the region, of, obviously. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. But to be frank, even if you had to go that little bit over, right? I think yeah. this is a property that you could spend the rest of your lives in quite happily yeah. and really get your feet into a fantastic community here. Mm. Mm. It's super actually, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's really. This is a real lifestyle, mm -hmm. I think, given where we are. Yes. And you haven't seen all of it yet. Although our mystery house is currently priced over their budget at seven hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds. The vendor is open to lower offers, and let's remember that our couple can move quickly. It gives them spacious reception rooms with lovely Georgian features, a kitchen diner with an equally large utility room, four double bedrooms with a fantastic master en suite, and while it may not have the football pitch of a garden they wanted, it does give them a separate barn which has huge development potential if they can get the right planning permission. The layout of the rooms is terrific, actually, the way the 
the kitchen moves to the utility and then moves to the dining room, I think is really practical and functional, and I think all the rooms are a good size. Dave and I don't usually go for older properties, um, but looking at this one, and the exterior, it looks full of character, and on the interior, it's full of character, but it's also pretty modern, and it's been modernised, you know, in keeping with the building, so it's really attractive. Overall, the Mystery House um, has uh, given us quite a lot to think about. Yeah, I liked it a lot, really did. Now, these are some of the original deeds that relate to this house, and this set are dated 1834. Eight, wow. How That's about amazing. that? The owner left them out. I've just found them. Aren't they fascinating? Excellent. So they could be yours one day, if yeah. you buy it. Yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah, lots to think about, eh? Mm. Let's go and put these somewhere safe and um, get out of here. OK. Situated high on the edge of the peaks overlooking the Derwent Valley, this lofty location is perhaps not the first place you'd expect to see street trams in service. But this is the site of the National Tramway Museum in Kreitsch, which holds over 70 trams spanning 150 years and is one of the largest collections to be found anywhere in the world. Earlier in the week, I paid it a visit to find out more about this wonderfully nostalgic mode of transport from the museum's curator, Glyn Wilton. Give me a potted history, if you can, of the tram, because sadly for many of us today it's something we no longer see on our streets, but, you know, here you can tell the story from beginning to end. You can. Uh, the, the tram was really a response to a big social problem. Uh, the Industrial uh, Revolution had brought people from agriculture into inner city, but that had caused massive overcrowding and, and disease. So they needed a form of transport so that they could build uh, houses further afield and, and move people in. And is that where this horse-drawn version horse comes in? That's right, because, of course, in those days, uh, horse-drawn transport was the only means. Horsepower was it. So... Uh, in order to be able to pull more people with fewer horses to, to make more money, um, you would lay a steel rail on the floor, which meant it was more efficient, because the roads in those days, of course, weren't tarmac, they were rough. Britain's first permanent street tramway was opened in Birkenhead in 1860 by an American aptly named George Train. The Edwardian era then saw a boom in the building of electrified tram routes in towns and cities throughout Britain so that by 1910, more than 300 tram networks had been created. However, the two world wars called a halt to further growth, and by the 1950s, tram travel had been replaced by buses. But the passion for restoring these beautiful vehicles is alive and well among the 200 volunteers working behind the scenes here, one of whom is Ian Ross. Ian, nice yes, to see good you. Morning. How Hello. are you? Hello. This is an absolute beauty, isn't it? It is, it is. How long has it taken you to restore this to what we can see now? We're working now in the seventh year of a five-year project. <laughs> Some of it really has been trying to source materials and uh, suppliers to produce the sort of finish that we want. What is it about trams that makes you want to give up your free time? I mean, <laughs> I'm enjoying it and, and right. you know, having the chance to yes. work on something like this must be fantastic. Yes. But... I think it goes back a very long way with me. Um, I grew up in London and when I was very young, the trams in London were still running. Well, this um, is a, a London tram, isn't it? We've got Hammersmith, oh, yes. Brentford, yes, right. Twickenham, Hampton yes. and Hampton Court yes. advertised on the side that's of it. That's right, yes. Uh, the trams I rode on, unfortunately, were not as elegant as this one. But the detail on this, the kind of oh, marquetry, yes. is absolutely beautiful, isn't yes. it? it? It seems a bit over the top for a, a bus, effectively. It is extraordinary, yes. <laughs> yes. This company, which, which started uh, round about 1900, uh, ran their trams on the west side of London. So the posh end? The, the posh end, yes. And so they went for a very elegant tram, both on the outside and on the inside. I mean, it's like a royal train, isn't it? Yes. Back in 1914, the tram operators across the London area made up the largest tram network in Europe. Since the 1990s, there's been a renewed interest in the use of trams as a way of solving traffic problems and pollution showing how this historic means of transport still resonates in the modern age. But now, time to return to our house fires and see if they're on board with any of our properties. 
Well, as you've probably noticed, I love house hunting here in Derbyshire. And this week, we've had the chance to show Fiona and David, I think, three very strong properties. When we left the mystery house, David himself said that he was a little bit confused. So have they managed to resolve the wrangle, I wonder? Well, let's go and ask them. So, Derbyshire, still on the cards? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Well, let's just remind ourselves of the properties that we had a chance to show you. Property number one, now you've had a chance to mull it over, what do you really think of that one? The living room, the big living area, was really nice. Probably the nicest of the three properties. But as we transited through, it seemed to work less for us than too many small little rooms. Yeah, I think I'd agree with that. It didn't quite suit our purposes, did it, mm -hmm. really? Our second property was an altogether different proposition. You wanted views, you wanted height, and we certainly had that. Yes, I mean, we were both really taken yeah. with that, I weren't think what we? what surprised us was how spacious it was. It was, if anything, bigger than, than something we really wanted, but left us feeling, yeah, we could live there. And that, that was, kitchen. That was amazing, actually. The kitchen was enormous and it was really nicely finished. Yeah, I like that. See, when we left there, I thought, that's it. We were very taken so with we. it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you said, quite rightly, David, that the mystery house would have a lot to compete with. Yes. Mm. Um, so, how did the mystery house do? It competed. It certainly did. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it would be our favourite, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I like that house a lot. Comparing the mystery house to property two, it made us realise how much we would probably prefer to live in the village, so the location yes. yeah. became more important. And property three, or the mystery house, it, the property itself was very nice, so the two combined together. And I think that's what um, edged it for us. Mm. And on top of tremendous living accommodation, there's the potential with the barn, you know, the future possibilities there. Well, yeah, the possibilities there are, are many and various. But certainly in terms of extending your living space, it yeah. offers a lot of scope. Yeah. So what happens next? I think um, we're going to go back and have a second viewing of the mystery property and uh, consider that seriously, but that is definitely our preferred property out of the three. Yeah. Good. Well, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, best of luck. Let us know how you get on. I hope to see you in the mystery house in the not-too-distant future. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks very much. You know, when we first met Fiona and David, we learned that this move of theirs had been some 10 years in the making, a decade of dreaming about living here in Derbyshire. And now, with any luck, they're just that little bit closer to turning those hopes and aspirations into a reality. All in all, I think it's turned out rather well. I'll see you next time. Although David and Fiona really liked the mystery property, in the end they decided the balance of a large house with a smaller garden wasn't quite right for them. So their house hunt in the Peak District continues.